So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Now, in this video, I wanted to give you guys a lot of value, and basically I wanted to create a free training on a certain topic that I always get asked about, whether it's in my windshield repair business or whether it's in you know the business that I run of teaching people how to uh, actually get started in the windshield repair business. So that topic is exactly how insurance and windshield repair correlate. And to kind of explain that, I think the easiest way to do so is to give you an example. So let's just say Joe Schmo, he is driving down the road in his car. He just bought a brand new car. Let's say it's a 2023 Tesla and he's driving down the road, minding his own business, trying to get to where he needs to go and he hears a loud bang on his windshield. So he looks around, checks out his windshield, then he notices a little rock chip right on the passenger side of his vehicle. So Joe's first thought is, what do I do? I need to fix this, how do I fix it? His first thought comes to, okay, now I have to replace this windshield because obviously it's damaged. But then he remembers that he actually has a pretty expensive windshield because for one, it's a brand new car. For two, it's a Tesla because anything on Tesla is expensive. And for three, he doesn't really have the money to just drop on a brand new windshield when he just got the car. So he remembered that he talked to his neighbor the other day and his neighbor actually had a rock chip on his windshield. And then he remembered that his neighbor told him that he actually had that rock chip repaired through his insurance company. So Joe Schmo decides to give his insurance company a call just to check to see if his windshield is covered under his insurance policy. And luckily it is covered under his insurance policy because he has a brand new car and he has a good coverage on that car. So insurance companies want to repair those windshield chips because they know that if that chip were to expand and get bigger, then they have to replace that whole entire windshield. And not to get too deep into this, but most cases insurance companies don't wanna have to pay for a replacement. The customer definitely doesn't wanna have to pay for a replacement and all around it's just nobody wants to spend that much money so the insurance companies got smart and they decided to actually cover windshield rock chip repair under their customers insurance policy because they knew that if we just repair those rock chips then we don't have to replace their windshield then the customer will be happy because they don't have to replace their windshield they don't have to come out of pocket to to replace it and all around it's just a much better and easier way to go about it because it's just basically cheaper for everyone. So of course there's a little bit more to it, but essentially to make this training a little bit shorter, I wanted to kind of give you just a basic rundown and basic understanding of exactly how this works. So how do we get our windshield repair business in with these insurance companies to where we can actually be that person to repair those rock chips that everyone gets? Now this is a little bit more in depth of a process and I go over this in my training program, but essentially the way you wanna do it is kind of get into the networks of all of these third-party administrators that work with the insurance companies. So there's SafeLight, there's Lynx, and there's Gerber. Those are the three main third-party administrators that, that work with insurance companies. And in most cases, these are the TPAs or third-party administrators that are going to be handling the claim where people put in to actually have that rock chip repaired. So the first step is actually getting into network with them. Basically, uh, you kind of have to reach out to them, actually put your business into the database and uh, get yourself signed up into their database to where they can actually send you work orders to perform these jobs. Now you're probably wondering exactly how the process works for the windshield repair business and the actual customer and exactly how you eventually get paid by the insurance company. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jump in my computer. I created a roadmap of exactly how this works and kind of showing you step-by-step -step of exactly which steps need to be taken to actually essentially get paid to do these rock chip repairs. So here's the roadmap that I actually personally created for the students inside windshield repair training. And this is a very detailed explanation of exactly the steps that uh, happen uh, while you actually create a insurance claim for a rock chip repair uh, done for someone that wants to get it covered under their policy. So to start off right here, up top left is the first step. So first step is have your customer call their insurance company to confirm policy coverage. So essentially you wanna get a customer, right? You're gonna have a customer that wants to go through their insurance to actually have their rock chip repaired. Now you're gonna have that customer call their insurance to confirm coverage. This is the easiest way because a lot of customers will ask you, say, hey, I have a chip, uh, it's covered under insurance, can, can you do it? but you don't know if they're telling the truth, you don't know if their policy covers it because not all insurance companies actually cover windshield repair, but most do. Um, essentially, you wanna make sure that they have a good policy and they have the policy that will cover it. So you want to have your customer call their own insurance company to confirm the coverage. Now, if it is covered, we go to step two. If the rock chip repair is covered at no cost, 
have customer create a glass only claim. So essentially they're going to be creating a claim on their vehicle because it's damaged to the vehicle. So they need to create a claim. Now, this is a part that a lot of people kind of get confused about because they don't want their insurance policy to go up, their premium to go up, and they don't have to pay more for their insurance just to have this repaired. But actually, this is part of their insurance policy, so it should not raise anybody's premium. They shouldn't have to pay a deductible to have this done as long as their policy covers rock chip repair. So if the rock chip repair is covered at no cost, have the customer create their, their glass only claim. Then we move on to step number three, which is customer will then need to request your shop to do the work. Now, in most cases, usually if the third party administrator is handling this, which they always do, they want to send it to their people, meaning SafeLight or whoever they use as a glass, glass shop to, to do these repairs. But if you find this customer first and you want that customer to use you, all they have to do, all the customer has to do is request you or your shop to do the work. Since you are in the database for the insurance companies, you're inside their network, they can send you this work order from there. So if your customer requests you to do the job, then they can actually send it to you. So we'll go on to step number four, which is the claim processor will then call you to confirm the details they will give you a set price on the repair and you have to accept it. So the claim processor is going to give you a call just to kind of confirm the, the, the car, the coverage and all of that. Then they're gonna give you a set price of exactly what they're gonna pay you. Now you can't really negotiate this necessarily because this is just what they pay. So you kind of have to accept it if you wanna do the job. You don't have to accept it if you don't wanna do it, but if you wanna do the job, you kind of have to accept their price. They're gonna give you a set price and once you accept that, you can move on to step number five which is claim processor will send you the work order via email. This will have customer vehicle info for you to complete. So from there, they're gonna go ahead and send you the work order. Now you have this work order, this piece of paper that basically shows all of the vehicle information, all the customer information. Um, and this is the work order that you're gonna be using to actually bill for this job. So essentially this is just the work order. This is the confirmation basically that you can do the job and uh, actually get it done. So once you have this work order, you're gonna go ahead and schedule an appointment with the customer and complete the repair. So this is the easiest part, right? You're gonna go ahead and schedule with them, get the repair done. Once the repair is done, you're gonna go ahead and move on to step number seven, which is once completed, have customers sign the work order or the referral page. So the right here, the step where you got the work order, you're gonna go ahead and have the customer sign after the repair over on that work order just to kind of show that you did the repair. So essentially this is just kind of for the claim processing part. They just want to see that you actually did the repair and they want the customer to kind of sign it off. So you're going to have them sign over this referral page or this work order. Then we're going to go over to the next step and then we're going to go ahead and email this work order back to the TPA um, invoicing center with your own invoice or use the information to fill out the invoice via the TPA invoicing website. So. Essentially, when you get set up with these insurance companies and you get into the network, they're gonna actually give you an account to where you can actually invoice all of this stuff. But if you don't have an account yet, or if you're just starting out, you probably don't have an account yet. So you're gonna go ahead and email all of this uh, paperwork into the third-party administrator to actually have the whole process get uh, invoiced. And uh, eventually, you can actually get paid. So last step is you finally get paid. So let's run over this really quick one more time. So you get a customer, you're gonna have your customer call their insurance company to confirm the coverage. If the rock chip is covered at no cost, have the customer create a glass only claim. So they create their claim, they get the process rolling. Customer will then need to request your shop to do the work. So they're gonna be requesting your shop or you to do the job on their car. Otherwise, the insurance company will send it to a bigger glass company um, that they're contracted out to, but essentially you don't want that to happen because you found that customer, you want that customer to work with you, so you're gonna go ahead and have that customer request your shop to do the work. From there, the claim processor will then call you to confirm the details. They will give you a set price on the repair and you have to accept it. Once you accept that, the claim processor will send you the work order via email or they'll put it into your um, TPA invoicing center, so the, the um, the website and the uh, profile that, that you created when you actually got um, onboarded into the network. But essentially, they're probably gonna, just gonna email you the, the work order. So once you get that emailed work order, you're gonna use that work order, bring it to the customer, go ahead and do the job. You're gonna schedule an appointment and uh, get the job done, get the repair done. Now, once it's done, you're gonna have the customer go ahead and sign off on that work order. 
Now you're gonna take that work order and you're gonna email it back to the third party administrator. You're gonna send that back to them so they can uh, go through the processing and actually get you paid finally. Now, once you get paid, usually you're gonna get a check in the first job or in the beginning. But once you actually get that check, you can then create an account with them and essentially get direct deposit. So just much quicker, much easier. So that's kind of how the process works. Hopefully that gave you a little bit better understanding of exactly how the insurance companies and us windshield repair techs and us windshield repair businesses kind of correlate. And uh, hopefully that answers some of your questions that you had on the topic. Now there is a lot more to this. You know, you have to get set up with these third party administrators. You gotta get into the network. And those are the things that I go over inside the windshield repair training program. So if you are interested in getting started with this business, I highly recommend you go to my website and check out all the information I have on there. You don't need to, you can go throughout my YouTube channel, you can check out YouTube and figure all this stuff out uh, on your own because it's, all the information is out there. But if you want kind of a little bit of a holding hand process throughout the, the way, um, definitely would recommend getting into the program and uh, make it to where I can help you. So that's all I have for you guys. If you have any questions on any of this, leave them down in the comment section and I will try my best to get back to you and answer any questions that you have. Hopefully I helped you out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.